The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus said, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Beloved in Christ, grace to you and peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The problem isn't that we aren't awake. Every Advent we hear, stay awake, keep watch, and are encouraged to be about our work as we await the coming of God in Christ. We're exhorted to not become complacent, and to be mindful of our call to be God's blessing in this world. We know this. And frankly, our problem isn't that we aren't staying awake. Our problem is that we're sleep deprived. In the prayer of the day, we ask Christ to awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins. How could we be more awake to them? The past 60 years have jarred all of us awake to the interconnectedness of our lives on this earth and how decisions we make or don't make could harm people we'll never even meet. Sins used to be only those things we do or don't do to people close by. We were harsh or we lied or we didn't care for those in need next door. We still do plenty of these kinds of sins today. But now we know there are so many more things we do or don't do that our forebears never had to consider as sin. Every purchase we make has the potential to pollute or to support bad labor practices, or corporations that abuse the poor? You can't just buy something because it's a good price. Not anymore. We know this. We're awake to this. If our family is cared for and secure, housed in a good neighborhood, that's not enough anymore. Now we know that even if we're safe and sound, if others can't even earn enough to put a roof over their heads, or others suffer from oppression and injustice that we don't, but live even in our city, we can't rest. We know this. We're awake to this. And we know that we can't just decide whom we want to vote for every couple years and not think about government in between. Not anymore. Now, we have to consider the state of our democracy, the strength and security of the right to vote, the hidden agendas of leaders 
that work against the good of the vulnerable among us without our approval. We have to pay attention all the time now. We know this. We're awake to this. Serving Christ in these times, in our global interconnectedness, is exhausting to be awake to all the things we know we need to be awake for, the things we want to be awake for, to make a difference in. Awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins? When was the last time you took any of this lightly? Isaiah's cry resonates deeply with me this Advent. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, the prophet calls out to God. You used to act, God. You used to do marvelous things. Won't you come? Come down and save us. Now we know that we who belong to Christ are anointed to be God's presence in this world, to love God and neighbor, to be the presence of Christ to all in need, to serve God and be a part of God's healing. We know that God has no hands but ours, no feet but ours, no arms but ours, no voice but ours. But with Isaiah, we sometimes wonder, when are you going to come, God? When are you going to act? Must we do all? Sometimes, in these times of pandemic and serious social crises, these times of poverty and injustice and lack of compassion, it feels like we're outclassed and overcome. If we could just take care of ourselves and those closest to us and keep it simple and let the world and everyone else take care of themselves, sometimes that sounds pretty good. Now we know that we can't. And in our hearts, we know that we don't want to. But it sure would feel better if we knew somehow that God was also lifting some of the weight here, working alongside us, doing wonders. And we know God's answer to Isaiah is the child whose birth celebration approaches. God tears open the heavens and comes down, not with earthquake and fire. God tears open the heavens, sets aside divine power and glory, and becomes one of us. In Jesus we see the triune God's answer to our plea to come and save us. But to see how that can help us today, you need to remember that the season of Advent prepares us for multiple comings, multiple Advents. One is to prepare for that celebration of the tearing open of the heavens 2,000 years ago at Christmas. On this first Sunday of Advent every year, in particular, we are reminded that one is to prepare us for the coming of God in Christ at the end of time. But in between, that second Advent, that second coming, that's the one we need to hear about most during this season of Advent. The coming of God in Christ to us right now, in our lives, our hearts, this world. Today, Paul says this coming is your promise. God is faithful, Paul says, and will strengthen you to the end. You will lack no spiritual gift you need to serve your God in Christ. Far from frightening you with the threatening dangers of your sins, Paul not only proclaims the forgiveness of your sins and failings, but the strength from God you need to be blameless before God in the day of Jesus Christ. The advent of Christ for which you most want to pray in these days, Paul suggests, is the coming of God into your very heart to give you the strength, the courage, the hope, 
you need to face today. You know you're awake and you know you're trying hard. What you need to remember is that you're not waiting for the master to return. Christ has already come again and lives in you and in me and in all God's children. And the mighty acts Isaiah asks for, the tearing open of the heavens to restore this broken earth will happen. God has promised it. It will happen as Christ's spirit fills and strengthens more and more. God is faithful and will strengthen you and even let you rest at times so that you can be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And through you, through all, God will restore all things. This is most certainly true. In the name of Jesus, amen.